my name is Melody Lee and thanks for stopping by. And if you're new here, welcome along. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. And if you like me, you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, share with a friend, neighbor, whatever. And let's get on with what we're doing today. So this is going to be a first in a series of different videos that I've got because what I've been doing lately um, besides reading is walking uh, quite frequently and I like to do walks in Scotland with my family or my husband. Um, been doing like one or two a week uh, for the last few weeks and I thought I'd share these walks with you and some pictures from the walk so that you can get an idea and a feel of how these walks are going. Also, if you're unable to come to Scotland, then you can actually go and basically go on the walk for me. Some of them I've took more pictures than others. However, I've always put a little bit of history about the place and the walk itself. I will be reading off a script because all these notes will not go in my head. As you well know, if you've seen my previous videos, I have a degree in history and I absolutely love it. So every walk that I go, I want to find out the history of the walk, the history of the area. And this is no exception. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So after this super long intro, thank you for joining. Let's get started. So the walk that I'm going to discuss with you today is Alva Glen, or I'm going to tell you about rather. Um, Alva is located in Clackmanager at the foot of the Oak Hill hills. The access to the walk is a small car owned park at the base of the Glen. It's a free car park. You don't have to pay for that. And the walk is about 1.5 miles or 2.5 kilometers and takes about one to one and a half hours. Now a short history on Alva and the Glen. A settlement was established at the base of the burn that runs down the Glen with a church by 1260 under the control of the Cambus Kenneth Abbey near Stirling. Post Reformation, the estate fell into the ownership of the Erskine family, and in 1636, Sir Charles Erskine incorporated the tower and the house into Alva House. The 1700s saw the expansion of Alva when silver was found in the Glen, and Sir John Erskine opened a mine which exploited the purity of the silver, making his fortune in. And in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the woolen mill and textile industry grew rapidly on the banks of the Alva Burn, but dwindled in the second half of the 1900s. However, the largest mill of the mills, Strood Mill, which began in 1825, survived this downturn and remained in use until 1976, later being turned into flats in 1987, but still dominates the views of the town from the top of the Glen. Erskine's Alvin House was purchased by the Johnstone family in the early 19th century and was expanded by 1820. Carrie Johnstone inherited the house in 1890, but in, by her death in 1829, it could not be sold and later, was, and later was destroyed by the military during World War II for target practice. Imagine that, target practice at a fancy country house. A newer but smaller Alpha house now stands on the same spot. Okay, so that's our wee bit of history section here. So now I'm gonna just start and tell you about the walk. So at the start of the walk, you already incur, encounter a waterfall over a man-made dam. Continue up, up further and there's a signpost telling you what, the story of the quarry man. So the quarry man, James, um, so what happened was James Murdoch, and, oh, who was a, um, minor in the area, uncovered an old grave in 1913 enclosed in a tomb. It was determined by Professor Bryce that the body was a dwarf, as the skeleton of was of someone aged over the, over the age of 21, but no larger than four foot two inches tall. Murdoch himself died on December 26, 1913, in a massive rockfall near the same site. The tomb itself is no longer visible and the remains whereabouts are a mystery. So we continue up the path and unfortunately we got sidetracked by another path. So we went off the other side, which is basically the Alva de Tilla I think path. 
and uh, you go up and it's got spectacular views and like a uh, we sit in area up there um and there was like little baby lambs and all that rubbing against the 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 fields i'll put some pictures up like i said i'll put some pictures up uh, of here um and after to show you the actual glen itself um editing anyway but we got a bit sidetracked so we went over there for a bit and then we went back on the track so it gives you the the field actually gives you um a stunning views over alva so like i said the street mill which is now in flats and you can see all the way to the Wallace small uh, the wallace monument uh in sterlingshire so you can see all the way over there and, and view that from there once we went back and got on track, uh, the, the next to the Glen, you follow up uh, the sides of the burn, which is a dense foliage. So it's basically like a contain. I know that it sounds weird, but I think they're called, they're really quite like temperate rainforests because they're very leafy and very damp pretty much all the year. The path is just rocks itself. So there is like a barrier for most of it. Um, but if, raining or, or wet you may want to um take protective well i would say use hiking shoes all the time because you never know when you're going to be slipping and i am a person who falls all the time um but it's rocks and man-made and during heavy rains it becomes uh slippy so um you are walking next to the edge of basically uh quite a drop there so be quite careful doing that especially with animals if you do take your dogs i have taken my dogs a bit but i don't remember i don't think we took it on this uh, particular one because it was forecasted to rain and for some reason my dogs don't like wet don't ask they're they're very uh picky them too and uh, there is an old dam which used to, when you roll up, there is an old dam which used to use and use during the old days of the textile mills, but it does look it, like it's pretty abandoned and is rusted over. But once you get to the top, there's actually some really beautiful uh, views over the, uh, over the valleys below and you get the hills crossing right there. Um, but also, this is where we stopped because this was one of the first walks after I haven't been on a walk in quite a while. Um, so we didn't want to go too far. You can go further up to the very, very tippity top, which has really good lookout points. Um, but that's quite a small and steeper climb up that way. So we got to the top of the gorge um, part there. Um, and we stood and took a break and then we went down from there. So I'm going to share with you my stats. These are my own personal health stats. Um, yours may be different uh, depending on your level of exercise or other factors, including health. So my stats for the day was 2.1 miles. It took us an hour and nine minutes with a 10 minute stop and burned 435 calories. Any exercise is a goal in my book and that's what we're working on here for health and well-being. Now, if I haven't put up all the pictures, I will put up the pictures on the last. I do provide uh, references down below. Um, please uh, look at those references if you do want to do any of the walks walkhighlands.co.uk is one of the best places to find walks in Scotland um, and everything is listed below in regards to that. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, they said if I haven't put all the pictures I will add them here after this and remember to stay safe, enjoy your walks, leave nothing take pictures and leave and leave with memories and leave nothing behind i love you guys i will see you on the next one adios <laughs>